Hello and welcome back to Investing for Generations, your channel for high quality stock research for long term value investor. And today I want to talk about Intel, the big chip maker, semiconductor company, because Intel reported their Q2 earnings and after that Intel make a big dip, uh, crashes over 6%. And the question is, what's wrong with Intel? In this video, I will just go through the numbers of Intel and then we'll, we will see what I will do with my position in my portfolio. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe, ring the notification bell to never miss another video. And then let's go. On Thursday, after the close of the market, Intel reported the Q2 earnings. And the Intel EPS beats by 21 cents. Um, and they also raise the guidance for 2021. The Q2 non-GAAP EPS of $1.28 beats by 21 cents. The GAAP EPS of $1.24 beats by 19 cents. The revenue of $18.5 billion plus 2% year over year beats by $700 million. Revenue of client computi computing $10.1 billion versus 9.96 billion consensus and the revenue of data center 6.5 billion versus 5.94 billion consensus. So overall it seems like good numbers. And also when we look at it a little bit more in detail then we see the revenue is up 2% year over year, the gross margin is up 2.9% points year over year and the EPS is up 12% year over year. And all of this is also above the April guidance from the Q1 earnings. When we look at the client computing group, we see the revenue is up 6% and the, upper, and the operating income is up 32%. And this is a record Q2 revenue on increased platform volume. On the other hand, we have the data center group and there the revenue is down 9% and the operating income is down 37%. But as we saw before, even these uh, declining numbers are better than the consensus estimates. When we look at the outlook for tr the whole year 2021, then we see that the revenue should go up 1% year over year. The gross margin estimately dropped 2.9% to 56.5% and the EPS will be estimately down 6% year over year. Free cash flow is expected with 11 billion. With these numbers, remember they beat the estimates almost all the way, but the market don't like it. And so on Friday, this, the shares of Intel just dropped over 6% to currently $53. This is really a big decline since April. Uh, Intel declined over 22% since. And so it seems like even if they beat the estimates, the market is not happy about that. And the reason for that is the outlook um, and especially that the gross margin estimately will drop. It seems like the margin lost a little bit the patience with Intel and also is in fear of the competitors, especially AMD, of course. But for me, I think this is a overreaction of the market because Intel still is the market leader by far. Of course, AMD is coming and pressuring a lot, but still Intel have a great market position. And so overall, I would say Intel is still in a good position, but the sentiment is not on their side. It's a very negative sentiment around Intel. Of course, uh, when you look at the past, um, then with the delaying of the ships. This wasn't very trust building, of course, um, but after all, in the reality, Intel still the leader in the market. And then you also have a big chip shortage. So there is a big market and the thing is you have to produce and you have to produce a lot and Intel try to figure out how to produce more and more and more. So this is a big thing, the chip shortage and especially in the automotive industry. The chip market is already a very big market and it will grow over the next years and decades more and more because 
right now you have almost in everything ships and especially the automotive sector needs lots of ships and Intel with a good market position will also gain from that. And so overall it's still a good business, still a cash flow machine which earn a lot of money every quarter. And then on top Gelsinger as a new CEO uh, it seems like they can bring back also the innovation. This is what this is where was a lack in the last few years. They had just had no innovation uh, inside the organization and so uh, with Pat Gelsinger hopefully this come back and then they at least can help their market share in an overall growing market and this would just mean that they will earn money and even more money than now. And so overall as I said still a good business and I'm very happy I'm invested in Intel and I have now 169 shares of Intel because I bought on Friday at the dip uh, another 28 shares for $53. And so overall my position is now only up 3.4% just because uh, Intel is an underperforming stock lately. In the long term, in the long run, I'm very, very happy to be an Intel owner because the business is quite good, still quite good. The current valuation with a P ratio of only 11 seems very, very cheap. And I think sooner or later also the market will realize this and then the stock price of Intel will just go back to the intrinsic value, which is, I think, around 68 or 70 dollar, just around somewhere there. And because of that, Intel is the biggest position in my portfolio with 7.35 percent. You see here the whole pie of my portfolio, and I'm very happy Intel is the biggest position because, in the long run, I think they will be fine, and so will be the stock price. And if you're new to my channel, you see here a pie of my whole portfolio. You will find on my channel a deeper analysis to all of these companies. So feel free to check this out. And if you like the whole idea of long-term value investing, then please just subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell to never miss another video. And then we will see the next time with another video about another stock. And then of course, later today, also my weekly update on my whole portfolio. See you then. Take care. Bye bye.